it's gotten basically no coverage in the United States that the Russians are in asymmetrical warfare with NATO-backed special forces in eastern Ukraine and even up to the Russian border. And there's been acts of sabotage, power plants blown up, uh, huge uh, high-tension lines severed. I mean, it's, it's ongoing. And George Soros, again, goes on CNN and brags that he overthrew Ukraine and is all behind it. And then our media says Putin started it and did it all. And I'm going to be honest with you, the last two weeks, the tension in the air has risen to such a level. That my gut level concern has gone from a whisper 20 something years ago to a screaming, raging voice in my head and in my guts and in my heart. Now, that's an allegory for how I feel. I'm not actually hearing a screaming voice in my head. It, it, it's, it's the, it's the, you know, before Rachel Maddow takes that clip out of context, it is the gut level, but also intellectual understanding that the world is in such a crisis. The German banks are teetering on the verge of collapse. That's now mainstream news this last two weeks. Larry Nichols told me off air about it five months ago. He said, get ready when you start seeing the news about the German banks about to go under. Now that's in the news the last two weeks. Build, you name it, the biggest publications are saying massive crisis. Merkel flooding five million jihadis in. Putin coming out and saying Kiev is now engaged in terrorism. And, and Putin says, I'm losing Russian troops in the fight with Kiev and the Western back forces, and we're going to have to strike back. I, I played the clip last hour. And then when we put headlines out in the last few months where his rhetoric is intensifying, his warnings, they have mainstream media make jokes about it and say that I'm putting out hoaxes that Russia is threatening war. I'm playing you clips of Putin saying it with a Russian translator. In English. And so are, are the Democrats and Rachel Maddow and all these people smoking their own dope? You don't have audiences anymore. You've got a 6% trust rate in AP's own study this year. Congress has a 9%. Everything you do turns to hell. Our own intelligence agencies are hacking you because they know how evil you are. And are you people really going to push us into a war with Russia or a war in the Middle East? Now, Larry Nichols was a Green Beret Special Forces guy, saw action all over the world in clandestine operations. He then got assigned, and that's all highly classified, he can't get into it, basically to the Clintons, uh, and ran him for office, put him in, was there, and then um, if you're a new listener, new viewer, when he's the guy behind the Clinton Chronicles, all of it, most of what we know early on about the Clintons is from Nichols, because as he said it, his dad was dying of cancer. Uh, Nichols is battling cancer himself right now, and he's your prayers, and there were stuff like little kids and stuff, you know, that were around the mean Arkansas where the drugs were being flown in, where ended up dead. And Nichols said he just absolutely hit his knees, started crying and, 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 and just repented, not of that, but just to be involved with the Clintons and that he then came out against him. And he has a lot of courage. We really appreciate him. And um, he's, he, he's here today to talk about the health issues, but also the fact I don't have the staff of the crew, if you're a new listener, to, to tell, to, to play the clips of Larry Nichols Listeners could do this, please. We need your help, folks, because this really proves stuff to people. It was over a year ago he would come on and say she will not be indicted for the email scandal. They put this out as a point the media is allowed to cover to cover up all the other scandals. This is a tactic he was trained, you know, by intelligence agencies uh, for basically overthrow of this country. Okay, I mean that's what they're running against us. So he knows their playbook. He's been proven right. Because then you only talk about the emails all day, not the hundreds of other scandals. That's how you control it, is by putting that out. He was proven right there. He says that this health thing is a curveball, and we better watch out. And I agree with him. You know, I remember last week telling other websites and people, and even some of my own sweet crew, that uh, those medical records were fake. We showed them on TV, and I said I thought they were fake, because the way it's written, the fact that this is already her treating physician, that doesn't really treat her, so those records are already public. And sure enough, they let him sit there for a week or so, and now they've come out and said all the health stuff's fake because of this. Clinton campaign cites fake documents to claim Hillary. Health questions are debunked. Classic straw man hoax designed to distract attention from the real evidence.
And that is exactly the tactic I've seen over and over again. But clearly, she was in and out of a hospital having brain surgery, they admit, for a year. They won't release those. She's deteriorating. She's having to sit down all the time. She, she looks like hell, or she's the best actress I've ever seen. Uh, now, is she imminently going to die? I don't know. Uh, but Larry Nichols can give us uh, his expert view, and he also has some amazing sources. Uh, Larry Nichols, thanks for coming on with us. Hey, buddy, how are you? I'm doing all right, my friend. How are you doing? You you uh, you look like you uh, need our prayers. Hey, I'll be all right. You know, Alex, what worries me about Hillary, you're exactly right. This is a tactic that uh, they use. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, what she's playing up with the sitting in the chair and all of this health issue stuff coming out, Alex, I fear she's doing it on purpose to trap, trap Trump. Imagine the debates coming up. She's afraid of those debates with Donald Trump. So she's going to come across as the sick female. And oh my God. Oh, I'm so sorry for. Oh. You bet. Me no Donald Trump for attacking a poor sick woman. Now, having said that, when I was with Hillary, we had a problem with Hillary all the time. She has incredible eyesight problems, she has virtually no peripheral vision. Steps used to drive her crazy. People, we'd have to get on each side of her. Stages scared her. So she's got that problem. Then when back in those days, it was the beginning of using teleprompters, but she couldn't hardly use a teleprompter, Alex, because as she shifted from one teleprompter to the other, her eyesight was such to where she couldn't get back to where she was on the other one. So she would just go into this funk for a few seconds where she just was just addled. So you got that going on. And then we have no idea when she had the concussion. You know, a lot of people think about concussions because we hear about them with football and, you know, a month later they're fine or whatever, or they go back in the game. Let me tell you, I've had a bunch of them. Concussions don't always work that way. Now, you're talking about football players whose heads get banged every day. You're talking about boxers whose heads get jammed up every day. <clears throat> but you take people like us that aren't being hammered every day. When that brain gets slammed up against the wall of the skull, you know, Alex, it can take six months to two years for the manifestation of the damage. Sure. I mean, I've had concussions up. so bad when I was a teenager that I would mm -hmm. not, I would stutter for like a month and, and yeah. uh, like see frost around my eyes. Right. So there may be medical issues there, but I still believe there's uh, the way they're playing this, Alex, is totally against what they would do if she really were concerned about that medical problem. I mean, the, the massive cover-up would be significant. There's well, let's shift there. gears back into the dozens of times you said, mark my right. words, they will not indict her. And you also mm -hmm. pointed out a bunch of other people been operating like this, so that they're not going to want to go to jail. Uh, I, I mean, you were proven absolutely correct. You said, watch, well, you know, Kumi is not going to call for her indictment, and everybody thought you were full of prunes. Let me, let me tell you something, Alex. Guys... <laughs> when they released those documents from the FBI to Congress, and when they got them, and they were redacted, and the only people that could see the non-redacted version were the members of Congress that are on the Select Subcommittee on Intelligence that had the security clearance to do it, then that in itself tells you she lied like a dog. Otherwise, they could release the whole document. They wouldn't have to just release redacted versions. There was classified material. You know it, I know it. Guess what? People know it. But the Clintons don't care. Because guess what? They're doing what I told you they would do, Alex. They're destroying Donald Trump. They've got the media at their beck and call. You know, out comes the stuff about email. What do they talk about? Trump says some word about something. And they jump on him for using the word extreme, having to do with, you know, proving... Uh, excuse me, approving Syrians from coming into this country. They're just constantly distracting. Now, there's one other thing that they're doing, Alex, that's got me gravely concerned. Russia, you're exactly right. Folks, Russia is a powder keg about to go off. But in the Clinton playbook, 
How do I know? Because I helped write it, folks. I wrote that damn thing in the Clinton playbook. You always accuse your opponent of doing what you do. That's how you know what they're doing. That's how you can describe in such detail what these people are doing. So think about it this way, the Manafort thing, right? Remember I told you Manafort, I was worried. I was worried about Paul Manafort. I had been told, I told Jalex that maybe he was a double agent. I didn't know at the time what was being said or why it was being said, but I was concerned about it. Well, now we find out that Paul Manafort, through his company, was negotiating with, through uh, the Ukraine, the Russian-backed government in Ukraine. He was negotiating with them. Well, guess what, folks? All of that was approved by what? The Secretary of State. They knew about Manafort and his connection with Russia, be it legal, be it illegal. I'm sure it was legal, but they've known about it since day one. But they waited and waited. And Alex, now you understand why I couldn't figure out exactly why when Trump made some offhanded remark about Putin that he liked Putin's Well, I know Pachenik. I know Pachenik. Obama. I know Pachenik when Manafort took over three months ago on air. He said Manafort's not a bad guy, but he said that he it's going to be a problem. We need to get him out of there. And, right. and he's going to be coming on. And of course, Pachenik, <clears throat> high level you name it. Uh, so uh, he's going to be coming on today. I tell you, this this whole thing just gets crazier and crazier. Let's talk about what they're going to pull to try to keep Trump out with Larry Nichols straight ahead. New developments in the Russia situation. In fact, coming up here in a few minutes, I'm going to play a clip from Vladimir Putin in a press conference last week that has gotten zero coverage where he talks about Ukraine using paramilitary terrorists right up on the border of Russia and in the Crimea. Now, we know this proxy war has been going for two years. George Soros brags that he staged the whole deal. But Larry Nichols has got a lot of amazing contacts. Of course, the uh, consummate Clinton insider. He's accurately predicted the fact that she wouldn't be indicted for the emails when everybody else said he was wrong. This story just broke, and this is from mainstream uh, television in 12 countries in Europe. This is accredited uh, international television, but not on U.S. news. Infowars.com just broke. Report, U.S. moving nukes closer to Ukraine. Pentagon denies, but evidence suggests otherwise. And that's what Putin was warning of two months ago. And this is from Euroacta TV. You can go and break down how uh, they publish articles in 12 languages and broadcast TV and all the different uh, systems uh, that they uh, basically uh, cover. And this is a real respected media outlet. But, but, but this dovetails with what Putin's saying. Then you've got all this craziness with suddenly Turkey flipping to Russia when just a year ago they were on the verge of war with them or less with the Russian shootdowns, the Turkish shootdowns of Russian aircraft. Turkey considering military ties with Russia as NATO shows unwillingness to cooperate. Okay, that's out of RT. That's basically state-run Russian media. ISIS nuke threat. Dozens of U.S. nuclear bombs stored at Turkish air base are at risk. Now, we knew this a month ago, but this is now mainstream news. So quite a time to be alive uh, right now. The U.S. is reportedly moving nukes from Turkey to Romania amid rising tensions in Ukraine. But Putin's talking about these cruise missiles that they call uh, ballistic missile defense that he says are actually a sneak attack weapon. Well, the Pentagon doesn't even deny that those missile defense systems can uh, double as offensive I mean, I had the former head of Star Wars on, Colonel Bob Bowman, breaking down the fact that they were always an offensive weapon system. Uh, Larry Nichols. Well, those weapons are there for one reason and one reason only, to take out command and control within 18 minutes, Alex. Now, you can call them defensive if you want to, but I guess that is a form of defense because it's been long known by our country, by our government, by our military at least, that should things erupt, the first thing you've got to do is be able to take out command and control out of Moscow and where they have it stashed out. But here's exactly what's going to happen. And here again, I can't tell you why I know I did not get it from some epiphany that I woke up and thought it up. But here's what's coming. Putin is scared to death that Donald Trump could win the presidency. And he has let his people know, and he has let the countries that have formerly been a little bit iffy on Russia, jumping up and down between America and Russia, which one to align with. 
Putin feels very strongly, Alex, that there's a chance that something's going to happen. He's going to have to do it while Obama and Hillary are still around. When Trump gets in, Putin's leverage will be gone. You know, Putin understands what Trump is trying to tell people. Either jack up NATO, make NATO pay for their own defense, chip in anyway, or, or call it off. And they believe, they believe that Donald Trump, if NATO nations do not step up and pay their share, Putin and his administration, they believe 100%, Alex, that Trump will jack out of it. He'll pull out of it. They also know that we are the weakest we've ever been in the Middle East. Larry, Larry, talk to me like I'm five years old. Uh, you'd think Putin would want NATO to not be as strong or dissolve, and, and he's made overtures that he likes Trump, uh, but you're saying there's something beneath that. Explain to me how Russia doesn't want a strong NATO. Well, because if there's a strong NATO, it, it, it traps Putin. Look, Putin's not trying to rebuild. This is where our country, our leadership, if you want to call it that, our drain trust, has it all wrong. Putin's not trying, Alex, to recreate the old Soviet bloc nation. No, I know that. He's not. He's recreating the Soviet, the Russian Empire. The Russian Empire. Well, he said that. And he, and he knows that he's vulnerable. He knows he's vulnerable. And a strong NATO, he wants no part of. He okay, wants, well, well, then he should like Donald Trump. I don't understand why you're saying that he doesn't like Trump. He doesn't like Trump. Well, he likes Trump, but that he's scared to death that when Trump gets in, Trump will force NATO, Alex, to toughen up. I guess that's the part I'm not getting across. Oh, I understand. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, well, sure, so he's actually scared of what Trump will really do. Right, exactly. I mean, they are scared to death that Trump, through his threats and, and proving what he'll do, that NATO will buck up. And, and Russia can obviously tell the best generals are all behind Trump. That's right. So, look, Putin's not a fool. He knows America's weak. He knows we're weak in Europe. He knows we're weak in the I get it. So he's making his move, he thinks, before Trump gets in. Before Trump gets in. And what should scare you to death oh, stay is there. the we, way we, we, we got a war game this, okay, because I don't know if I totally agree with you. And I'm not saying you're wrong, but uh, I got to figure this out. Now, we're going back to Larry Nichols here in just a moment. Before we go any further, we are running a special right now that will end uh, by sometime this weekend. We have a parasite detox that just takes every known natural herb and plant extract going back thousands of years um, in many ancient texts that is known to cleanse out the body in a healthy, natural way. Living Defense is very hard to source uh, because it's got so many ingredients and then you've got to have them at the highest uh, standard and be able to pass California standards. Basically, there can be no toxin in it, which is great, fine. Uh, it, last time it was sold out for six months. This time it'll only be sold out probably a month because we've gotten better about our supply chain. Harmful organism cleansing, it's 20% off. And you're like, well, why are you going to do that? Why are you going to discount it even if you're selling out? That's what we do. We always have specials. We always have loss leaders. Uh, and then... You know, the, the listeners appreciate that. We appreciate the listeners, and that's what makes this this whole uh, world go round. So thank you for getting the high-quality products. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for all the great reviews. You're making it all possible. Now, we have sold out, basically, of, of the 20-plus films that I've produced over the years. Almost all the DVDs are sold out. We're going to have to basically start throwing in some colloidal silver or something on this deal very, very soon. Uh, the new Amerigeddon film by Mike Norris and Gary Haven is now exclusively available for at least another two weeks, longer than he thought. This can be in Walmart everywhere else, uh, at InfoWarsStore.com. The new film, Amerigeddon, by Chuck Norris's son, Mike Norris, and Gary Haven is now exclusively available at InfoWarsStore.com. $5 million budget. This film exposes the New World Order takeover. It's also still in some theaters and is a great tool to help wake up friends and family. When you buy two copies of Amerigeddon, you can buy one for $19.95, you buy a second one, you get four Alex Jones films. It was two, but what we have left is the Police State Trilogy. That's three, and then Police State Four, which is excellent. So you get four free films right now, but that is going to end probably today. And then it'll be a bottle of uh, X2 colloidal silver, which everybody needs, obviously. Uh, so that's a total of four DVDs for less than $40, a uh, limited time. Well, yeah, that's actually six DVDs. So 
That is what you will find at InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com is where you will find all the nutraceuticals. But it's all on the same high-quality, high-tech, 21st century uh, online shopping center system where you will find high-quality storable foods, the best water filtration systems. Whatever's the best, whatever's the highest rated, whatever's the highest quality, I go out and make partnerships to get it from them at the lowest price. And I come to you know, a major water filter company and I say, well, I, don't, I don't care if you're selling water filters to other people for 50% of your cost or, or you know, 50 of your cost and profit. You're going to do it to me at 30%. You're going to make a 30% profit because I'm going to discount this and dominate the market. And they go, nope. And then six months later, they go, okay, I guess so. So when it gets to free market, that's how I can sell Alexa Pure or Pro Pure that are the best systems out there. They're apples and oranges, but they're gravity fed. One might be better on this. One might, might be better on that. But if you're drinking tap water or you're having to give that to your family, you're crazy. We've got shower filter systems that are the best, four-stage systems that blow away the competition or less money. We go out and scour the very best, say, G, you know, G-Shock watches. Well, everybody knows those are the best survival watches. We go make a good deal, sell them for industry standard price. You know, some stuff we don't have probably the best deal. The point is, a lot of our stuff is the best deal you're going to find. Non-GMO heirloom seeds, books, films, Hillary for prison shirts. A lot of stuff's proprietary to us. You only find it at InfoWarsStore.com. The point is, though, your purchase there is what is building this news operation that you see changing the world. Now, I've said this a thousand times. I'll say it again of late. I was never somebody that got butterflies in front of a crowd, got butterflies playing football. I get butterflies if I was leaving school and some bully when I was in eighth grade who flunked three grades was saying he was going to kick my butt, and I started not going to find him, then I'd get butterflies if I didn't go confront him. And I'm not saying I'm a tough guy or anything. That's just the way I am. My gut's never been wrong, folks. And as, as I get older, I always follow it. When I was younger, I didn't. My gut has gone from, and I've talked about this the last few years, from being super concerned to ultra concerned to now screaming concerned. I mean, I am, I've never almost not been able to be on air, okay? I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Because I don't want to say I'm panicking, but I have, I mean, you can see the dread, but I can feel it. The danger to my children, your children, civilization right now, and I've never talked like this. People know that. Is now so intense that I am never been in a self-hate mode. I've always felt pretty good about myself. I feel horrible that I can't figure out words or I can't figure out the guest to get on or somehow to, 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 to find a way to stop what's happening. And, and I'm not beating myself over the head. I'm just psychoanalyzing myself that things are so intense that I'm desperate. I mean, I, I can see historically what's happening. I can see the preparations. I can see the economic preparations. I can see all the emergency COG preparations, continuity of government. And I'm just saying to myself, my God, we really are in the hands of evil. What do we do? Do we pray? Do we repent? I mean, do we get more politically involved? Sure, a lot of folks are waking up. Sure, Donald Trump listens to me and others. Okay, but where do we go from here? We're going to talk to Larry Nichols here in just a moment, just, just finishing up with the Russia situation and then going back to him. Our report is now up on DrudgeReport.com. Report U.S. moving nukes closer to Ukraine. And this, this article is going to get a lot of scrutiny, and, and the media is going to spin this. So we, we probably need to add the previous reports we've done where Putin says they're moving nukes to the border. So that needs to be added. We also need to add that uh, the NATO statements about moving troops in Poland up to the Russian border and other borders with Russia, uh, just to document because they'll sit there probably and attack Drudge and deny this is even going on. But this is being uh, reported by Eura Act, and this is an independent European media platform specializing in publication dealing with European news and European-centric topics, and uh, it's uh, breaking down all the different uh, publications, and then they're picked up for different TV feeds, and they put it out in English, uh, German, Spanish, Greek, Bulgarian, Romanian, you name it. And they're based in Brussels, Belgium. But the point is that we already know this is what Putin has been complaining of. And so this just feeds into the fact that we have these other headlines. Turkey considering military ties with Russia as NATO shows willingness to cooperate. ISIS nuke threat, dozens of U.S. nuclear bombs stored at Turkish airbase 
are at risk of being seized by terrorists. That's RT and others reporting that. None of this is in our news. And then we've got this information. RT, Kiev has turned to terrorism. Putin on foiled sabotage plot in Crimea. This is at a press conference days ago and no coverage. Let's play a minute from that press conference and then go back to our guest. Here it is. This is highly alarming information. It is true that our special forces have foiled an attempt by a group of sabotage infiltrators belonging to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry's intelligence agency who were seeking to penetrate the Crimean territory. And in view of these events, it has become pointless to meet with the Ukraine's current authorities at the Normandy format. We have suffered losses as a result of this operation. We undoubtedly cannot turn a blind eye to the deaths of our servicemen. But I would also like to address our American and European partners. I think today it has become obvious for everyone that Kiev's current authorities are not seeking ways to solve problems through negotiations, but have turned to terrorism instead. This is a highly troubling development. There are no other reasons for conducting such actions other than to distract the Ukrainian people and divert their attention from the disastrous economic situation and the miserable conditions most of them are living in. All right. Now, going back to Larry, but I want to just add this point here. Putin, again, in the last few months, has warned of nuclear war and says, you understand the danger we're all in. We played those clips. Our media denies that's even going on, denies that that's even happening. But I do, in retrospect, thinking back to what Larry was saying 10 minutes ago before the break, when the West lines up against Putin, when NATO moves up against his borders, it makes him have an 85% approval rating and allows him to move ahead with his plan to basically make it a more nationalist country. If Trump is all friendly, de-escalates things, then Putin will not have as much political power. Well, then why is so much Russian TV on the surface pro-Trump? Because they know Hillary's openly against him. So I'm trying to square what you're saying. I, I mean, I get what you're saying. You're saying Putin thinks NATO and Hillary are weak, actually. Well, they're the ones that are aggressing with, with um, folks like George Soros starting the whole Ukraine thing. You're a smart guy. I'm not disagreeing with you. You have a military background, you know, Clinton insider. Larry Nichols, explain to me this equation. Right. I'm not doing a good job. You have to understand I'm kind of in a miserable state right now, so forgive my I understand you're very ill, sir. We love you. We, we pray for you. Go ahead. <clears throat> but listen, Hillary and Obama, and Putin knows this, Hillary and Obama want to stay in power, right? They want to stay in power. Putin is afraid of Trump because Trump's going to come in and he's going to solidify NATO. And, and exactly what you said, remember, for Putin's personal survival, his personal opinion rating, the stronger NATO gets, right? The stronger NATO gets, the stronger he becomes within his country. They're worried that Trump's going to come in Trump is going to put all of these tough moves on NATO, force NATO, force Europe, literally force Europe to suck it up and stand up. And then what happens? He gets a good personal rating, but now reverse engineer that, Alex, reverse engineer that. At the same time, he's got personal opinion going his way. But Alex, we're, we're sitting on a time bomb over there. You're, you're talking yourself right now. We're moving missiles right up to the border. I mean, those things go popping off. Those things go shooting. You're in war. And they're you're calling them. They're calling a missile defense, but the very same missile delivery system can carry a warhead. Right. I mean, where they're at, Alex, they're of no value to us as a missile defense system unless the actual missiles that are fired at somebody else come from specific, specific locations. But isn't it odd that every one of those places where those missiles are going are strategically timed to within 18 minutes, added up within 18 minutes. I was about minutes, to say, well, that's what Putin out. keeps saying. He keeps saying, you, this is not about Iran. You're not putting them around Iran. You're putting them no. to hit Moscow. That's right. You're not even putting them at the borders of, of Europe. I mean, think about it. They're within 18 minutes. He's not a fool. He can see that. 
and you're sitting there and, and Obama and Hillary, and in some ways, I guess you could say Trump's playing into this matter, but what you're getting close to is one of those missiles going off in you. I was about to say, so let me ask you this question. Why on earth are Hillary and all these people and Samantha Powers, I mean, because it's a, it's really a weird look with a woman in a skirt with big necklace going, we're getting tough with Russia, <laughs> strutting around, has never been in the military. I mean, these people understand how dangerous this is? What are they thinking? No, no, that's the problem, Alex. They don't. That That's exactly the problem. You're sitting there with Hillary Clinton, everything to her, is about politics. Everything to Hillary and Bill, I've trained them, I know. Everything to them is about election, re-election, uh, extortion, blackmail. It's that all the way around. Why do you think they bumbled up all the stuff in the Middle East with ISIS and Al-Qaeda? Look, they have no clue what they're playing with. Putin does. Putin does know what they're playing with. And Putin is afraid that Trump knows. And listen, Trump can go in with the best of intentions, but as long as those missiles are sitting where they are, yes, you strengthen NATO, yes, Putin gets a favorability rating. But let me tell you, when those missiles start going off and people in Russia and elsewhere start dying, those opinion polls don't mean much anymore. And I'm telling you, Alex, God help me for all of the people listening. You have no idea how close we are to war. You know, I told you how close we were to the banks collapsing. You're starting to see it. I told you back then, I didn't know if it was next week, next month, but it was coming soon. Well, you're seeing it, they're collapsing. You have no idea how close we are to one missile, one missile errantly going off. And you've got a full-scale war going on, full-scale. And the Clintons don't know they don't care. It's just about politics to them, Alex. It's just about politics. I know. I've dealt in business with people who are normal for decades and then suddenly don't know kind of who they are. It's not like they even have Alzheimer's. They just don't care anymore, and they can't. <laughs> they, care. They, they just get like in a malaise. Just, ah, and, and I see that in our leadership. It's crazy. And when I talk to the Secret Service and other people, they say, listen, it's the trashiness, just like the Clintons stealing you know, the cutlery and the plates when they left the White House the first time. They said it's the trashiness, it's the it's the not caring, it's the, they come in with briefings and terrorists are moving weapons, and there's like, ah, shit. Yeah. I mean, Obama, they just think they're invincible, and Obama is watching SportsCenter like eight hours a day. The president watches ESPN all day long. I, I mean, what it's like, who the hell are these people? Yeah, where, what have you heard? Obama doesn't even go to the national security briefings. Alex, he misses 80% of them. They don't care. They don't care. We have to care. That's Our what children, I'm saying. I'm, I'm just a normal guy from Texas, and I know all these generals and spooks and everybody, and they're all freaking out, and, and then the, the president doesn't even care. It's, yeah, well, you ought to be me. You ought to be me. You ought to have generals, active generals in the service right now calling me and saying, Nick, what are we going to do? What the hell am I supposed to say? Do, you know, what am I supposed to do? You know, that's why I'm we'll I know, talk it's crazy. About it I mean, I mean, there. I mean Napoleon and Hitler knew what they were doing, but still yeah. got themselves into wars that they lost. I, I'm looking at just a bunch of stumbling, weird, power tripping, red carpet freaks who ought to just go be Hollywood producers if they want to be butt kissed all day. They shouldn't be I mean, why would they turn ISIS and Al Qaeda loose to murder Christians and then Obama blocks Christians getting into the U.S. 0.3 percent when 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 Syria is 20 percent Christian. I mean, they really are out to get us. They really. But then, if he's an evil mastermind that wants to kill Christians, why is he watching Sports Center? I, I, right. It, you know, Alex. And then we talk about it in earnest. You talk about it. I talk about it. Bless your heart. You get it worse than I do. And the media comes at you like you're some kind of mad scientist, sicko out here spreading conspiracy theories. Hey. This is not a conspiracy theory when you can sit here and see the president of the United States opening up and letting Syrians in. Think about this, Alex. Obama is letting Syrians in by the tens of thousands who are coming here claiming, of course, that they're being suppressed, they're being tortured, they're being all of this by this government, this Sharia law in Syria, right? What's the first thing they do here? They come in here and they're trying to invoke Sharia law. Does that make sense to a normal person? They're the invaders that came into Syria. They're not even letting Shiites out.
They're letting oh. the Sunnis, the invasion force, in. And Alex, we all sit here, help us. We sit here thinking there is nothing we can do. There is something we can That's do. That's what I want to say. What do you really think is going on with Trump? I mean, I know, and I don't want to be a wishful thinker, but we've got Bloomberg putting in independents that are really Democrats in the polls. We have Reuters adding 15% more Democrats uh, in uh, uh, to give her a lead. But then I talked to internal pollers. They think it's really a dead heat. Rasmussen has it as a dead heat. Uh, the battleground states, he's five to ten points or more ahead. What do you really think is going on, and what do we do to get Trump in? Uh, number one, don't believe a damn thing you see in the mainstream media. You should know by now, anybody that's listening to my voice, you should see that this there ought to be a word beyond bias. There's, it's not bias. These it's are absolute. deceptive enemies. Yes, they're the enemy. Now, Trump has walked into what I told you he was going to walk into. You know, Alex, you and I, we begged Trump to talk to me. Just please talk to me. We won't have to tell anybody. Just talk to me. I can help you with the Clintons because you're not going to be running against a bunch of 16 Republicans in a primary. You're going to be running against the Clinton machine and the media. Well, he's walked into it. He's got him a mess of it. He has got to stay the course. Now, we... We have to do the only thing that we can do as Americans. And you know what that is, Alex? Where we should have been all along. States' rights. See, we should, just like in every state, North Carolina as an example, I've got people calling there left and right. North Carolina's trying to get voter ID law. They passed the law, duly passed it in the state of North Carolina. What happens? It goes through everything. Then it goes to federal court. The black robe mob goes to federal court. They shut it down. You know what I've told the governor? I've told the people to tell the governor, don't go to federal court. Refuse to go. They have no standing when a state passes a law. Now, Alex, think about it. Why on earth would the Democrats be hell-bent? See, that's where Trump's got to help us. Why would the Democrats be hell-bent to stop voter ID laws. Because they Why? have a bunch of illegals voting and dead people voting. Golly, go figure that one out. Huh? I used to, in Conway, Arkansas, we had a bus company back in the day when I was with the Clintons. We'd go get five, three to five school buses, go up to northeast Arkansas where there were a lot of impoverished blacks, load them up, bring them to the ghetto parts of Little Rock, go into the different precincts, put a T-shirt on them, give them a card that said, I'm Larry Nichols. They'd go in, they'd vote the way the card said. They'd come back and get on the bus. We'd put another T-shirt on them, a different color, tell them their name's John Doe. They go, and we'd have them vote four and five times. We go to the next precinct, do it all over again. Without voter ID, that kind of fraud in the in Philadelphia, in Milwaukee, in the ghettos. Well, they that deny stuff it and say on. it's racist if you say it. California, Illinois, all these states have passed laws that went to the governor's desk, but even they knew that would open up a can of worms. Well, okay. it, to, to, to let illegals vote. To let illegals vote. All right, if it's, a, if it's racist, then why at the Democratic convention, when you went into the convention, you saw the big sign that said you can't, in, you can't enter the convention center without a photo ID? Was that not racism? Look, they're whipping us by using profiling race. Every time you say something, we're either homophobics or we're Islamophobics or we're racist against the blacks. Stop it. Stop it. You can stop it. Every one of you can stop it, but you got to stop it at the state level. Tell your state legislature that you can reach out and touch. Tell him we want this, that, or the other law. I understand. Pass listen, listen, the time passes. we had, Larry, then I also want to put up your, your, your PayPal account for folks to help you battling cancer. I don't even want to get into it, but it, it's tough. What's that you got on your arm there? You're, about, you're almost, we need to pray for you, buddy. You know, we love you. You're like Darth Vader over there. <laughs> kind of held together in paper clips and anyway it's just a thing where they had to go through an artery and kind of fix a thing on my heart and uh did that last night and i'm supposed to be laying you down are a tough quiet. guy i i want to i don't want to give the background but there's been nights when you're calling me up telling me stuff right before you go into surgery and i tell you you are something else look it's our country it's all we got it's all we got out of it I'm sorry I look the way I do. God knows no, it's I'm okay. Hey, I mean, hey this way. we love you. You have a beautiful soul. A lot of people say, well, this guy was this evil guy for the Clintons, a hitman, all this stuff, or whatever people say. Point is, you're doing the right thing now for 20-plus years and gave up all the stuff when you were the insider. And then you said, I'm not going to be part of this. If that's what <laughs> we need. It, you know, it's not a bunch of cowards out there. But, Larry, let's put up your PayPal for folks that want to give you a donation to help with your medical bills. I know you need it. I know some of the donations you say have 
carried you through, you know, pay for the surgeries, you name it. Nichols Live at AOL.com. Nichols Live, one word, Nichols Live at AOL.com. Or Larry Nichols, 58 Kingsington Drive, Conway, Arkansas, 72034. And uh, again, my friend, I know you've pledged to make it through this election. What does your gut, what does your gut tell you uh, about this election? I mean, is it going to be Hillary or, or is it going to be uh, Donald Trump? Yes. And this is going to sound bragging, and I don't mean it to be. You know where I'm coming from on this, Alex. There's a little more time for Donald Trump to get to me or to get to you to get to me. Or he's going to lose. He's going to lose. He's got to learn to fight the Clintons the way the Clintons fight. And he's got to learn, Alex, to know what the Clintons are going to do. Well, what do you think of him hiring? Party. I mean, what do you think of hiring Bannon? I mean, Bannon's a street fighter. She's a good lady. I've known her for years. But however, well, there's another, I'm talking about Bannon yeah, as new on his campaign. Uh, yeah, uh, oh, the other lady. Kennedy. You know, I'm, Kennedy. I'm the guy, Kennedy yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, Brandon and Kennedy. Number one, she's a good lady. She's a poster, but she's never run a national campaign, certainly never a presidential campaign. Oh, no, I've heard the guy that was sure. Yeah, and then the guy with Breitbart News, I don't know that he helped him. I think Trump's just got to be Trump, and I think he needs to know what they're going to do before uh, they do there. it. there. We're back in 70 seconds. And Dr. Steve Pachenik's coming on. Stay with us. Uh, we have specials at InfoWarsStore.com that end in the next few days, like 20% off uh, on the Parasite Cleanse. Stay with us. Yeah, he had heart surgery last night, but he's on air with us. If you're not a TV viewer, you can see Larry at InfoWars.com forward slash show or some TV stations around the country and cable systems that pick up the show. Uh, they asked me, Nightline asked me, if this stuff all comes out and you're wrong, where you feel guilty. And I said, uh, I know I'm right. I've read the Globalist Stone documents. But I said, yeah, I would, I would feel guilty. <clears throat> but I was asked once by a talk show host, you know, if you're wrong about 9-11 and the government at least letting it happen, you know, you're going to be ashamed before God. And I said, FBI just went public. We know they stood down. They were ordered to. And that's what's so frustrating is we have a responsibility to tell people the truth about all this. And it just gets crazier and weirder as we go down this road. And, and Larry Nichols is our guest. You know, before this man can rest, he obviously wants to expose what the Clintons are doing, what they're up to. But, you know, I know that the new head of his campaign obviously listens to the show some. I, I know Trump sees clips of the show. And, you know, occasionally I can talk to Trump. But he's got a lot. I mean, Trump. Trump, you know, quite a few of the media has pointed it out. I tell him one thing about election fraud and a few other things that comes out word for word a few days later talks about it. The media makes a big spin out of that. I think that's a badge of courage. So he's a smart guy. He's listening. He's definitely for real. That's why they're so scared of him. But just in the few minutes we have left then, what do you want to say to Donald Trump if I can get this clip to him, Larry Nichols? Look, all I want from Donald Trump, I want no money. I want no recognition. He doesn't even admit to anybody. But he needs to know, Alex, what the Clintons are going to do before they do it. He needs to get ahead of them instead of being the recipient of all of this stuff. The only way you're going to shut down a media, Mr. Trump, the only way you're going to shut down this media whacking you every day is you got to get ahead of it. you got to take the Clintons out of their game. If you say what they're going to do before they do it, Mr. Trump, then they can't do it. They can't do it. I can help you with that. Look, that's all I can do. That's all I can do. Well, give some examples of what their next. Alex, give some examples. Alex, I, give some examples right. of what their next. What what's, what are they going to do next? I mean, give Trump an example. Number one, right now, they're starting right now to get ready for the debates, Alex, and they're doing everything they can to make Hillary look like the poor woman that's going to be so how does he sick. counter her i mean does he say look at you playing the part of a poor little sad woman but you went to libya and destabilized that and put isis in control i mean how does he counter something like that well if i told on this air he wouldn't be able to do that but i can assure you you can use your imagination if you knew that's what she was setting up right if you knew alex that's what she was setting up there are some dirty little nasty things that can be done. And if you're going to play by Marcus Queensberry rules, get out of the game. Get out of the game. You're going to learn to fight the Clintons. You better learn to fight the Clintons like they fight. There are things you can do. Oh, tell Number us. One, tell us right now. Go ahead. Well, first off, the first thing I'd do is I'd start telling everybody, gosh, I feel so sorry for Hillary being so sick that she's having to sit down. 
that just really breaks my heart. I mean, play into it now. Play into play it. Be a big old it. sweetie pie. You, you bet. Play into it now. What on earth would she say? What would you say, Alex? Think about it. If, 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 Mr. if Donald Trump started right now saying, hey, listen, everybody shut up about Hillary being sick. My God, that woman, look how brave she is for fighting through the illness. And I mean, you know, I can't believe people would be mocking her medical condition. I mean, get after it now. What on earth would Hillary say, Alex? Wouldn't that be the bomb of bombs against her? Before they start telling him to apologize for it. Just oh, go, you hey, you my bet. supporters Just... doing this. Don't you dare. Yeah, you bet. Hey, FDR was in a wheelchair. Whatever yeah. brain surgery she had, let's, uh, you know. Now, let me ask you this. If he started that now, how could they use that in a moment against him in the debate? Like Larry, let's do this. Let's set name. you up if you can do it, say, Sunday or Monday for 30 minutes just on what you would advise Trump to do. What Larry, mm -hmm. what you know, what the Clinton insider tells, you know, warns Trump of. Let's do that. Thank you so much, Larry Nichols. God bless you. We'll be back with Dr. Steve Pachenik and more news. Talk show host is Alex Jones. He's a he's a conspiracy theorist. Radio talk show host Alex Jones. Alex Jones. Jones is the wildly popular conspiracy theorist. Radio talk show host and conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. He's deeply, I think, racist. I just got called racist by MSNBC. I don't want that man to have a gun. 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. The Alex Jones Show. Watch the free stream live at infowars.com forward slash show. My fellow Info Warriors, I am very excited to be able to announce to you the introduction at InfoWarsLife.com of a new way to save time and money when you stock up on InfoWars Life formulations like Survival Shield X2 and Super Male Vitality. Just go to InfoWarsLife.com today, select your favorite product, click on Auto Ship before adding to cart, and choose how often you want us to send you another order. Every time you choose Auto Ship at InfoWarsLife.com, you get 10% off and you you won't have to worry about running out and having to reorder next time. And of course, you can cancel with one click anytime. As you know, I'm all about the idea of a 360 win. And the new auto ship feature at InfoWarsLife.com is a sure win for everybody. A win for liberty, a win for health, and a win when it comes to big savings. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today and save 10% on your next InfoWars Life order by selecting auto ship at checkout. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139.